John, I think they've been sort of a stealth pursuer of him through this whole thing. And at the winter meetings last week, I heard a little buzz about, you know, keep your eye out for the Phillies. And once they got out of the winter meetings, I think the Phillies were sort of ready to make their move. And people just questioned whether the Phillies could do it because they typically have a policy where they don't like to go more than three years with pitchers. But uh, I think they had to get everybody on board with this thing. And, and uh, they made it happen to the surprise of an awful lot of people. Where are they coming up with the money? I mean, I realize the ballpark's full every night, and they're winning, and they're, and they're making some cash, but they let Worth go. And, and this is just quite an outlay for them on top of the holiday and everything else they've done here in the last year or two. Yeah, they have some aggressive ownership, and it is a team that sold out 123 straight games. And, you know, Ruben Amaro, I think, is a guy who, you know, the general manager, when he gets his mind set on doing something, he just doesn't let go. You know, he's like a dog with a bone, and he, he likes to do these aggressive things. And, uh, you know, they are at this point trying to uh, trade Joe Blanton, which would free up a little bit of money, uh, not not a whole lot in the overall scheme, but uh, they just feel like they've had enough support, and, you know, this is a window where uh, you go into next season with that pitching rotation. I think they feel like, uh, you know, they can, they can win it all again for a second time. Another shocking part of this is just the Yankees target a guy and they don't get their man. I mean, that's certainly a rare situation. What do you think it was there? Yeah, there was like a palpable sense of frustration. I think the Yankees aren't used to throwing a $140 million offer out there and having it sit for a week. And the more you talk to the people in New York, they really did uh, get a sense of discouragement that, boy, there's really nothing happening here. And he just isn't interested in coming here. So both the Yankees and the Rangers, I think, have to be both very disappointed. I mean, the Rangers made three trips to Little Rock, Arkansas to recruit Cliff Lee, and, and they fell short, too. So... I think they both have to be shocked and, and now have to figure out, you know, where do we go from here. Finally, of course, we always love to uh, pronounce the World Series winner uh, in the middle of, of December, but <laughs> Halliday, Oswalt, Lee, Hamels, I mean, that, that's just frightening if you're going to run those out every four days. Yeah, I mean, it looks like we were, I guess if you had to go with the uh, prognosticators, we'll see them facing the uh, new reconfigured Red Sox lineup with Adrian Gonzalez and uh, Carl Crawford. It looks like uh, most people know who their World Series teams are going to be already, but there's two clear winners so far this uh, offseason, and it's the Red Sox and the uh, Phillies. All right, ESPN.com's Jerry Krasnick. Thanks for your time and all the information you have on the Cliff Lee agreement with the Philadelphia Phillies. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, John. Yeah, so uh, the Phillies fans are overjoyed, and I think second, then the folks in the nation, right? Boston, they're just going cuckoo. Yeah, as you said, it's rare that the Yankees throw cash and uh, don't get their man. It's also rare that you have a Monday night game go to overtime with a walk-off and it doesn't nice. like the show. Let's get to Houston, Stuart Scott.